We are so excited to welcome Lauren Mink to the kitchen table at the James B. Bean Distilling Company as our next artist in the music series. So welcome. Thanks. Right? It's have so nice you, to be here. Have you been here before? I have not. I have passed by here because my family, we always go over to Bernheim. We were so excited to, to book you for this series and, and kind of feature you because we know you're true to your kind of your roots, you know, and I love asking artists about growing up and you grew up in Winchester, I did. Kentucky, and so, yeah. you know, did that, like, growing up there influence your love of music in any way, or, like, what you wanted um, to do with your life? Yeah, so, I mean, growing up in a smaller town, I think that church is kind of one of those intricate parts um, of just life, and uh, so I grew up singing in church. My mom would drive me oh. up to Prestonsburg to, for like an hour and 45 minutes up the parkway uh, to voice lessons once a week. Um, and that's also where I learned to drive, was on the mountain parkway, yeah. because I was, by that point I was 16, and we were going up there for voice lessons, because she knew it was something that I really loved to do. And You're one of those rare artists that has had um, two chances to be on American Idol, and American Idol on our, our station on ABC on W. WHS 11. Yeah. And, you know, I think, wow, you know, some people never ever make right. it through anything. And I think for you to be on there twice, I mean, that really had to be kind of one of those moments. Just an eye, I mean, where do you begin? You're on American right. Idol. Right. So um, I actually auditioned um, my senior year of high school. I mean, American Idol was just all everybody was talking about. It was this brand new show on TV. And I auditioned and did not make it, like what I call the cattle call. And um, so I went back and I was on season 11. And I came into the hometown and we were doing a big fundraiser that weekend. And you kind of have to keep it a secret. And once again, small town, it's hard to keep <laughs> there are like no secrets in a small that town. There's this like American, American Idol, Idol like you know production crews following me around. It's just for stride. No it's worry. fine. Um, it's for our fundraiser. It's all good. And then you know a couple of months later, you know it's on TV. And um, so it put my program on this national level, which was just amazing. Um, and but I made it to Hollywood and I got knocked out in the first round. And um, you know at that point I'm like, okay, well what could I have done differently? What did I do? You know, did I? Should I picked a different song um, and so I wanted one more shot at it of just okay there has to be a better system a better way to like work this out and so I tried out the next year I made it through Hollywood week which was my goal and I wasn't having like a goal of like winning it I just had short-term goals that I felt like were achievable and I made it through that entire week and um, but when I came back what was so amazing um, was just the notoriety that it gave you in this different platform and um, after you have kids things yeah. change a little bit whole world changes. Uh, right <laughs> things change um, so it's not necessarily a goal of mine anymore to you know yeah. how can I become the next Carrie Underwood or whoever it's it's now just something that I do because I love it um, and it's neat seeing my kids start to love music too. Um, one of them's learning to play guitar. Aww. And so it's just really special to me to create music as a family. And um, I still play a ton, everything from playing uh, with my music partner, Dale Adams, to um, playing with my full band at things like Thursday Night Live in Lexington. Um, we can kind of play as much or as little as we want. What's nice is that we get to do this and do it for almost the right reason. It's not, we're not doing it for money or for um, notoriety or fame. We're just doing it because it's it's therapeutic, yeah. you know? It's, it's our outlet. You mentioned Dale, he's your guitarist. Mm -hmm. um, how lucky you are, you must think, just to have, you know, your paths crossing yeah. and to be able to perform with him. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. He, so he is known as the tone doctor in the yeah. YouTube world, and he has thousands upon thousands of subscribers. Um, people go to his page just to be able to uh, you know, learn how to play something. He'll get on there and compare different guitars or, hey, here's a lick, here's this. And so it's, uh, I love it because I feel like sometimes musicians um, don't get as much notoriety as the front mm -hmm. person. What advice would you give? Because I feel like we're overflowing with talent right now in Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I think, especially for female artists, yeah. finding somebody that they can relate to and get that advice from is difficult. Yeah, I mean, I think it just depends on what path you want. You know, for me, it changed, has changed since becoming a mom. Um, and 
But I've talked to lots of younger female singers, and one thing I said was just, just go for it. Like, something I've learned along the way is that you never know unless you give it a try. The worst someone can say is no. It might hurt for a little bit, but then you just keep moving on. Like, that's just one no. There's a thousand yeses out there for the one no. So just keep, keep going for it. Keep working on your craft, you know. Um, just keep out there. Someone will listen. Someone will pay attention. Yeah. Lauren, thank you so much. Thank you for having me.